Hello, this is Mr. Buffington from Simplify Academy, and today we are looking at like terms. Let's get started. First off, we will be adding and subtracting and joining like terms. Essentially, what we're going to be looking at with this is apples to apples, and this will make a lot more sense when the lesson's over. Right now, you might be saying, what does apples have to do with a math lesson? But I promise you will know by the end. All right. I want to quickly review some vocabulary terms. Terms are separated by addition and subtraction. For example, this is a an, an expression that has three terms in it. 3x, that's the first term. 2y is our second term. And 4z is our third term. They are separated by addition. Basically, what this means is we have three x's, two y's, and four z's. Now that may seem kind of confusing, especially if you're from a country other than America and you're thinking I have four Z's because Z is what it's called everywhere but in America. But that's not the point. You might be thinking this is a little confusing. So I'm going to think of it in terms of fruit. And this is where the apples to apples comes. So instead of three X to Y four Z, we're going to have three apples, two oranges and four bananas. Now we can look at it and go, oh, that makes sense. There's three apples, two oranges, and four bananas. That's basically it. That's what like terms are in a nutshell. Now let's go ahead and change something. Instead of having three apples, two oranges, and four bananas, we're going to have three apples plus two oranges plus four apples. Now we can join something together, right? We can join together our three apples plus our four apples and get seven apples. We can't join together those two oranges. We can't say we have nine um, orples or oraples. I don't know. We can't say we have nine of those comb combining apples and oranges, but we can combine together like terms. We can join apples with apples. And that's exactly what we're doing here. So let's go ahead and try looking at it a little bit differently. Same basic concept, a little bit differently for people who might like cars instead of apples and oranges. If we have five green cars, three blue cars, and another green car, we could join together our green cars and say we have six green cars and three blue cars. That's exactly what we're going to be doing. So let's now change out the cars and the apples and the oranges and put in variables. And this is where it starts to look like math stuff. If I have four X's and five X's, I can join them together to have nine X's. The way we would look at this in a math term is four X plus five X gives us nine X. If I had 6a plus 7a, what would I get? I would get 13a. Also, if I had b plus b plus 2b, what would I get? Think about that one for a second, because there's no numbers in front of some of those b's, but it's very similar to the car example I just did. There's a B, a B, and two more Bs. That's a total of four Bs. If you don't have a number written in front, it's like it's one. One B plus one B plus two B gives us four Bs. There we go. Variables are tons of fun. Now let's do it using subtraction. Let's say I had seven P minus three P. I would end up with 4p. I had 7 and I took away 3. Now I have 4. Okay. And one last question. What if I had 5h plus 2h minus 3h? I'm now mixing in addition and subtraction. What do you end up with? Well, first we'll add 5 plus 2 is 7 and then seven minus three is four. The H's stay the same, because imagine it's just like apples. Five apples plus two apples take away three apples, right? As long as the variable is exactly the same, you can join them together. These are called like terms. Let's go ahead and simplify 
one more. Again, each question we're doing is getting a little bit more complex, but step by step, we're getting this. With this one, I've got 4x minus 2x, and then I have three y's. Think about that. Remember what we've talked about with fruit or different colored cars? When we have different variables, what do we do? Well, we can join together the 4x minus 2x to get 2x, right? Because 4 minus 2 is 2. But we leave the 3y by itself on the end. These are two separate terms separated by an addition sign, and we've actually simplified this expression as far as we can go. We can't join together the x's and the y's just like we couldn't join together the apples and the oranges or the green cars and the blue cars, I think they were. I can't remember. All right, I've got one more for you. I want you to try this one out. Pause and practice this. Join together the ones you can join together and don't join together the different ones. Three, two, one, try it out. All right, here we go. We have a 2a, a minus a, and a c. We are going to take 2a and take away 1a. That leaves us with a. And the c is left over. So this one gives us a plus c. We can't join those together anymore. We have 1a and 1c. And that's our final simplified expression. All right. Sometimes when I'm doing this on paper, I'll actually grab a highlighter and highlight the like term. So I'll highlight all the A's and highlight all the C's or the highlight all the X's, highlight all the Y's, do them in different colors. And that helps us to visualize that the A's go together, the C's go together. All right. In this case, we only have a C. All right. Let's do one that's a little bit more complicated because every step is going to get a little bit more complicated, but you've got this. What happens if we've got a couple of numbers and a couple of A's like this, a 7A plus 2 minus 3A plus 4? When I'm doing this, I will tend to rearrange the equation or the expression. You can rearrange the expression as long as the symbol goes with it. So I'm going to put 3a, notice I've moved 3a and 7a together, but that minus sign in front of the 3a has to go with the 3a, remembering that we're taking away 3a. The 2 and the 4 both had plus signs in front of them, so they're moved together. And the reason I do this is because I think it's easier to add when you've got the numbers next to each other. So I've got a 7a minus 3a, that gives me 4a. And then I've got a 2 plus 4, which gives me 6. There we go. And that's how we would solve this. I am going to do one more question. And I want you to take a deep breath before you go on to this one, because I don't want you to freak out. It's going to look complicated, but trust me, it will be very straightforward once we explain it. So here it is. I've got a bunch of J's and K's. When you have parentheses like this, and it's all addition, you can get rid of them. This means J plus K plus J plus K. Whenever you see that and it is all addition, you can remove those. Because we're essentially adding J plus K to J plus K. When it's subtraction, you need to work with it a little different, but we're not going to get into that this year, actually. This year, we're going to be looking at when it's all addition, you can remove the parentheses, the grouping symbols. And now we put all the J's together, all the K's together, and we have 2J plus 2K. Now, if we wanted to take this to the next level, and this is seriously the next level, this is like beyond what we're going to be doing, but it's also something I think you may find interesting. And it is the whole reason we do the distributive property. So I would sort of feel like neglectful as a teacher if I didn't mention that in your future in seventh grade math, you will be seeing stuff like this, where you use the distributive property 
2 times 3x is 6x, and then 2 times 4 is 8, and then you've got the 3 there. And then you join together the numbers, 8 plus 3 is 11, and leave the number, or the 6x by itself. So this is just like in the future, you do not need to do this type of question. You're not going to see this type on your worksheet or on your quiz tests or anything else. You're not going to see this. But I want you to be aware that it does happen. And this is why we simplify the distributive property, because it's coming in your future like that. And it does simplify the term and the entire expression. All right. So I do want you to practice. Try this one out. I know it may seem really complex, but I want you to try it out. Try distributing 3 times 5a and then 3 times 2 and join together everything you can join together and leave everything apart that you can't join together. Try it out. This is like a super challenge question. All right. Let's do this. 3 times 5 is 15. We've got an A there, so we have to have an A. We've got 3 times 2, which gives us 6. And then the negative 2A or minus 2A is off the end. It stays exactly the way it is. So we'll join together 15A minus 2A to give us 13A. And the 6 remains on the end. You can't join that 6 to it. Now, if you were able to do this question, you are getting really, really close to being ready for all of the stuff that you will see, all of the distributive property and greatest common factor and factoring and simplifying that will really give you a good foundation for seventh grade. Okay. If this was kind of a little bit challenging for you, maybe a little confusing for you, that's okay because this is advanced work. This is the stuff you're not going to be seeing and learning and really getting into until seventh grade. Okay. All right couple things to remember. You can only join like terms. Sometimes it means expanding before you simplify. All right. Sometimes you have to do a little bit of multiplying or adding before you then join things together. And that's okay. And also remember that it's apples to apples. That's what like terms are. You're joining together things that are exactly the same. You're going to do great. Practice using the worksheet and then take that quiz. Show us what you know. Have a wonderful day.